the, the greatest number of fragments which appears in the frame. So if one pixel has uh, 99 fragments, then all the, the pixels must have uh, 99 uh, entries to store fragments. But some pixels may do not have any fragments, so this memory all is wasted. Uh, the other technique we compare is the per pixel paged linked list. Uh, this uh, technique is a variation of the per pixel linked list proposed by uh, the AMD, and it works by uh, storing all fragments in a shared buffer, and each pixel has a pointer to the first fragment uh, in its list, and each node of the linked list can store four fragments or more, and uh, one pointer to the next node of the list. And the last one we compare to is the deep frame buffer uh, implemented in the direct S, uh, SDK 11. And what it do is that for each pixel, it has a pointer uh, into a shared buffer and a counter, which m uh, indicates how much fragments uh, that are stored for the pixel. And the fragments are stored consecutively in memory. So what were method to do? We start by rendering the geometry and just counting how many fragments are generated. Then we perform a scan operation to create a base index to uh, point for each pixel where in the shared uh, buffer its list of fragments starts. Then we check if the memory we currently have is enough to render the entire frame. Then we render the geometry again, and now we shade and store the fragments into the shared buffer. Then uh, we sort and blend those fragments. So this is our shared buffer uh, to store fragments from all pixels. It has the exact amount of entries as the fragment generated for the entire scene for all pixels. And we index this buffer using a base plus displacement uh, strategy uh, using this counter buffer, which counts the amounts of uh, fragments per pixel, and the base buffer, which indicates where in the shared buffer starts the pixel list. So how do we create these, these buffers? In the first pass, first pass, uh, we only draw the geometry and we need a atomic increment in the counter buffer. Uh, and each time a fragment uh, comes, it increases by one the, the fragment buffer counter. And at the end of the step, we have the exact amount of fragments generated for that frame. Then we perform this scan operation to construct the basis index. How do we do that? Uh, the first, uh, for the first pixel, uh, the list of fragments will start always in the first position of the shared buffer. So for the, it always will be zero. Then for the second uh, pixel, uh, we do a shift to guarantee that the three fragments from the first pixel will have space to be stored. Then for the second pixel, the its fragment list will start three position shifted. And this is true for the next. We do shifts to guarantee to store the fragments from the previous pixels. And if we have uh, no fragment generated from pixel, 
no memory is reserved for it. And at the end of the scan step, we have the base buffer complete for each pixel where in the shared buffer uh, starts its fragment list. So we can check overflow by uh, combining the last entries of the base buffer and the counter buffer because uh, the base buffer has it last entry has the exact amount of fragment generated until the last minus one <laughs> entry of the counter buffer and if we combine them we have the exact amount of transparent fragments generated for the entire frame so we can check if the current memory we have is enough to render the frame so we start the fragments in the second geometry step uh, using the counter and the base buffer the counter is resetted and the base buffer was computed in the scan step. And we do that using the base plus displacement strategy. So when a fragment arrives for the pixel, the center pixel here, we access its uh, base uh, index and uh, its counter buffer and we combine the, these numbers to uh, to get an index in the shared buffer where the fragment can be uh, stored without erasing conditions. Uh, when the, fir the second fragment arrives, uh, we do the same, and the counter buffer already had uh, marked that uh, uh, one fragment already had, ar had arrived, and it shifts one position from the start of the, the fragment list. And when the last fragment arrives, it just the same. So, at the end of the John step, we have a uh, shared buffer filled with all fragments generated for all pixels. Here we are interested only in one uh, small example. And these uh, fragments are stored in the incoming order. But to combine them, we need them to be in depth sorted order. So we perform an insertion sort to uh, sort the fragments in uh, depth sorted order. And we do it in cache because it's more efficient. And we blend them in front to back order. And uh, this generated the color that goes to the color buffer. So some results. We compare our technique with the DX DFB, the buffer 2D, the per pixel link list with only one fragment per node, and the per pixel paged link list with up to four fragments per node. And our solution, we use uh, two simple uh, models, the bunny and the dragon, and you use the massive model, the power plant, with all the structures transparent. So the first model we compare the methods is a decimated version of the bunny, which means that it does not have the entire geometry, has a reduced uh, amount of triangles. And this is the only one that we could use to compare the DX, the FB original implementation. Um, as we can see here, this is the original DXDFB, and this is uh, our method. This is a FPS table, and the buffer 2D presents the best FPS results uh, because it does not need a special treatment to index uh, the fragments list. But uh, the second one is uh, our method, and here we can see the difference uh, in performance for the, the two versions of the algorithm. Um, we also compare the methods using the uh, stem from Dragon. And here, the DXDFB was unable to handle the same uh, 
Here you can see the FPS, here the memory consumption, and the methods. Uh, for all uh, the resolutions, three resolutions here, uh, we can see that the, the Bootg is the, the faster, but when it comes to the biggest resolution, uh, it is unable to handle the scene uh, due to lack of memory. And if we use more instances of the same model, uh, the memory consumption increases and the B3D is unable to, to handle the second resolution already. Oh, so go, go, go. <laughs> this is a, a power plant rendered with uh, our technique. Here, I don't know if you can see, but is the memory consumption. It is dynamic, it increases when uh, more transparent fragments need to be rendered. And here is the FPS. Uh, this uh, plot uh, represents how the number of pixels by uh, amount of transparent layers. Uh, so this uh, red area here uh, represents uh, the sum of pixels which have more than 100 transparent layers. The remaining area here uh, is the amount of pixels with less than nine transparent layers, which uh, compared with uh, more than 100 are insignificant. Uh, so here is um, more or less here in the plot and uh, the quality of the video is not what we see when we are running the method. It's just because uh, the tool we use to capture the video, <laughs> sorry. And each strip here means 5% uh, of the pixels. So next. Oh. Here, one example, uh, we have uh, in turn of 7% of the pixels has have uh, more than 100 fragments, here's 6% between 51 and 100, and 20% uh, uh, has between 21 and 50 fragments. Um, so, results. Uh, the B3D uses too much memory so it can render the, the, the scene. Our method is the one who uses less memory. It's a little bit less, but it's significant because our method is also the one who has the best performance. He, here is a plot of seconds to build each frame. You can see that uh, the PLL and PLL4 have some uh, peaks in the, the time to build the frame, taking to up to eight seconds to build the single frame. And here we can see uh, the performance compared with the depth complexity of the scene, the amount of uh, transparent layers per pixel. And we can see that this is directly related to the performance. And then, uh, just the second that when we have uh, more pixels with more than 100 layer, uh, the result is the worst. Uh, then the conclusions. So we propose a, a technique to handle uh, more transparent layers using uh, the less memory possible. And we do that we can handle uh, larger scenes with larger resolutions than the other methods. We have two geometry passes to do that while the others have one, only one, but the cost is omitted by the uh, process of the several transparent layers. And we still present unbounded memory, but the limit uh, of scenes we can handle uh, is expanded a little bit because uh, we use less memory. So that's it.
Thank you, Elena. Uh, uh, time for questions. So you, you mentioned that you have two buffers. Where one where you count the number of uh, fragments per pixel, the other where you save uh, in the second pass the colors of the different fragments. But then you, I mean, then you have to do the sorting, and for that you also need to have access to the depth of every fragment. So don't you need a third buffer to save the, the depth of every fragment? Uh, into the shared buffer, where you store the shaded fragments, we also store its depth. So we, when we sort in, the depth is there. <laughs> I have a question on the basic idea of uh, representing so many transparencies. Is it really needed to, pre to represent uh, visually more than uh, 10 or 15 transparency? I think from, that from the perception uh, level, uh, our uh, brain is not able to understand what is the, the content if so many different layers are composed. So at the end, probably, the final image is somehow <laughs> random. Huh? It's a beautiful image in, the, in terms of color, but it's very different, difficult to understand the meaning. So my question is, uh, are there uh, applications where rendering so many levels is really useful in terms of perception and uh, understanding the content? Uh, yes, we think about that too. Um, I can think of two answers. One is that uh, we do not test yet in high dynamic range displays, but this can be a use uh, because uh, with that technology we can perceive more uh, color variations. And the other was, I forgot. Uh, ah, we can uh, use the same technique we present here for transparency to other um, other uh, applications such as depth of field. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I have a question about the, the second pass, geometry pass. Is there you're figuring out where to place each fragment and then you update a count buffer? How do you guarantee this an atomic operation? Well, I mean, what, uh, what are you using? Shaders or kudos? Shade and okay. GLSL. So, how do you guarantee that uh, two uh, uh, fragments are now updating the count buffer at the same time? Uh, in the Fermi uh, line of the NVIDIA, we are had heavy uh, atomic operations in uh, fragment shader. So, we use that uh, feature provided by the hardware. Thank you, Lena.